Hello, thank you so much for joining me this morning. We are working our way through the prophet Habakkuk in the Old Testament. We are in the final chapter of Habakkuk now, chapter 3. Today we'll look at verses 3 and 4 of Habakkuk chapter 3. Let's pray. Let's get into the word. Father, speak. We need to, to hear your voice. We need to, to, to see your glory. We, we need to be reminded and rooted in the reality that, that you are the one true living God and that you would burst forth in our lives to rescue us, to redeem us, to restore us to relationship with you. I pray, O oh God, in the midst of the circumstances of our life and of our lives, that we would see you and know you as the glorious and good Savior. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Habakkuk now is wrapping up. He's, he's offering a prayer at the end of these three brief but power-packed chapters as he's reflected upon who God is, especially because of the plight and the problems surrounding him and the plight and problems of his own heart. And so yesterday we looked at how God is the one true living God over and against idols that are no God at all, and he continues to reflect upon who uh, the Lord God really is. Verse 3, God came from Taman, and the Holy One from Mount Paran. His splendor covered the heavens, and the earth was full of his praise. His brightness was like the light, rays flashed from his hand, and there he veiled his power. Now, if you recall in the last lesson, uh, you know, we, we craft and, and fabricate these idols that really are nothing. They're, they're really nothing more than self-expression and self-trust because we create them in our image to do our bidding and to do our beckoning. Here, we are reminded that God is God whether we acknowledge him as God, God is God, whether we recognize him as God, God is God over us and distinct from us. And we are made in God's image. God has the right to declare as the potter over the clay. And here Habakkuk is reflecting upon how great God is latent and, and hidden kind of in these or inferred in these images is God delivering his people in the exodus out of Egypt into the promised land or through the wilderness to the promised land. And, and we see this God came from Taman. God, God came from the south and, and the Holy One from Mount Paran. His splendor covered the heavens. The glory of God, the brilliance and the brightness of God, the earth was full of his praise, the, the, the Lord God was recognized and revered for who he truly is. His brightness and, and, and light is a really important image and theme because God's glory and God's uh, person is, is brighter than even the, the hottest and brightest burning star of any galaxy. His brightness was like the light. Rays flashed from his hand, and all of this, there he veiled his power. This is, this is an expression of, of God's glory and God's power. And, and when we see God's glory and God's power, we recognize and we understand our rightful place. But even more than our rightful place, we realize that God is worthy of trust. God is able to be dependent upon. God is, as I said, revered and respected and worshipped and recognized for who he is. It would be so beneficial for us to pause regularly, daily, maybe throughout our days, to ponder and to behold, to reflect upon and to rejoice in who God is, even in the midst of our circumstances. You're, you're going into a meeting that is super stressful. You're in a waiting room waiting for a doctor's report. You're stressing out before a test or exam. You're riddled with anxiety and concern about circumstances and situations. You're, you're glum and depressed over uh, your, your life and your loneliness to reflect upon and remember who 
God is. God is greater than our circumstances. Greater, God is greater than our situation. God is greater than even ourselves. Let us look to him and allow him to hold us in the midst of all the hardships and all the failures and all the struggles and all the concerns of life. Let us look to him and be held in his hand. Lord be with you. Prepare this day for worship. We would love to have you join us at Trinity Presbyterian Church this Sunday. We have a service at 11 a.m. You can join us online, but ideally being in person is much better. Maybe you already have a church family. Pour yourself into that body of believers, that community of disciples. They need you and you need them. I'll see you again Monday morning.